after COVID, the scariest thing in the world for me is a central bank digital currency. Because I don't think people understand the implications of what a central bank digital currency does. And I think for, for those people who are hearing about this for, for the first time or not that au fait with what it actually means. Right now, if you've got dollars in your hand, you can spend those dollars how you wish because there's always going to be a buyer or a, a taker to take those dollars out of your hand. But when there's a central bank digital currency, the government can literally, because it's all digital, they can control where you spend and what you spend and they can cut you off at one point if they own the central the central hub of the if ledger. If it's on one ledger. If it's on one ledger, one ledger. If it's on one ledger. And that is what they're gearing up for. They're gearing up for central bank digital currency. Now, just, I mean, let's just quickly compare central bank digital currency with what happened with COVID. So during COVID, there were, there were um, we had to stay at home and there were curfews and you had to be at home past a certain time and you couldn't go in the morning. Now, one way to enforce that is to just say, hey guys, you can't leave. And if you do leave, you better be part of the... Uh, um, it's it's essential workers. Essential workers. Oh, I was going to say Gavin Newsom's yeah. uh, private party. Another way to do it. <laughs> an, another way to do it is to just cut off your spending, and basically say to you, listen, you cannot spend money between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Cannot spend money wherever you go. You will not be able to touch money out of your bank account. That is a very, very, very scary scenario. Let me give you just a practical example. Say you have a baby and your baby needs diapers, and you have a little emergency. You go to the store. You want to get yourself a, a set of diapers. You walk into the store. You grab the diapers. You try and pay for the diapers. It says, sorry, the, the government said that you can't spend money between X and Y. Let's take it one step further. Government doesn't want you to re eat red meat anymore. Just doesn't want you to eat too much red meat. You want to go and pay for your steak. They say, sorry, you've had, you've had eight steaks this month. That is the power that we give governments yep. if we get a central bank digital also, currency. I would also add issuing credit based on narrative instead of merit. So as an example, you know, if you take everything onto the one balance sheet, the Fed can't go bust. So they can issue loans. They don't need to be paid back. They could care less. So you don't need to give them a credit score. So what happens is Adam goes down to the local bank. You know, you got to talk to Jerome Powell to get your next mortgage. And they say, hey, you know what? We heard what you said the other day. Yeah. Pat, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Your social score is a negative 10 mm -hmm. or whatever. But Dylan Mulvaney goes to Wells Fargo and they're throwing money at him. And he's got a 500 credit score. Why? Because he is part of that group that is part of that yeah. political narrative. You see that that woke narrative, mm -hmm. and and that's why having that all those deposits on the same ledger is so crucial for them to implement these Orwellian policies that all of us should be extremely concerned with. But the focus needs to be not so much on the CBDC, but all Which, of those deposits going onto one ledger. That's what people have to push back against. And the good news here is that is currently illegal. If you go to the Fed's website, they say that it is illegal for them to hold accounts of individuals. So we all need to be cognizant of that. So if they try to change that law, or if they try to circumvent that law, that we can hold them accountable. And that's if, what this if, is all about. Who if, would lead the charge in the United States for that to actually be implemented? Well, Jerome Powell is the one that's been speaking about it. So Jerome Powell is the one that has mentioned that they were looking into a, a, digital, a central bank digital currency. By the way, if you think that this, this is very far away, it's not. Like in China, it's happening in China. They've, they, they, they have been dealing with central bank digital currencies for for many many years, and there is a, f a festival. I think it might even be Chinese New Year, where the idea is that you give a red envelope, and inside the red envelope is is a gift, and the gift is a certain you know whatever it is. And they actually did a campaign in China where they had a red envelope campaign, but with a CBDC, so that people actually adopt a CBDC to see how much money that how, many, how much money they've got, and that's an adoption tool. Once people get used to using the central bank digital currency, mm. you've given the government the ultimate power. And have they already implemented yeah, and, and a social credit score in China? Is that actually they have implemented? They social credit scores in China, but remember, it's not the, the central bank digital currency is not yet mass adopted. There is a list. I don't have the website, but there's some website that actually shows a list of all countries and how close or how far they are from being able to, to implement a digital currency, a central bank digital currency. What's and at the top of the list? Off the, off I think the it's China, and I think it, there's like African countries there, like I think Nigeria. And I, I, I'll, I can check the tweet in, in a second. Yeah, but but so. for me, the, the, the scariest thing is if we get a central bank digital currency, you have got to make sure that as much of your money on the day that that central bank digital currency is a reality, you've got to get as much of your money into a neutral system as possible. But, yeah, unfortunately, I think you're going to have a problem there as well that people really need to be cognizant of. First of all, you, know, they, you never let a good crisis go to waste. So if we have a banking crisis, the FDIC comes in, they got 200 billion, okay, great, there's 18 trillion in deposits. 
So an easy solution is Jerome Powell riding in on the white horse and saying, hey, move your deposits from Bank of America over to the Fed, and you'll never risk taking a haircut. Done deal. Right? That's what the average Joe's going to say. Going to uh, the point that he was making, which is very, very good, is it, it's, it's n- people need to realize it, you can't program money because it doesn't exist, just like you can't program time. Okay, So in order for them to get the data they need to know whether Pat ordered a tofu burger at the restaurant or he ordered a steak, because that's going to go against his climate score, his carbon footprint score for the month, right? they have to have that detailed data. Right, So I've been talking to Robert Barnes, uh, the famous lawyer, about this quite a bit, and he thinks that they're going to have the IRS come in. And to get your EIN number, you're going to have to use their point-of-sale software. And so whether you pay with Bitcoin or whatever, they still could uh, attach that purchase to mm-hmm. your uh, the algorithm that would still crank out that score. You know, I took some of my employees from Columbia to Disney World because that was on their bucket list, right, this weekend when I was in Orlando. And I, and I don't even know if you know this. I was shocked. I went in there. I bought the ticket. And, you know, in the old days, you just buy the ticket, you give it to the guy, you'd kind of rip it, and then you'd go through the little spindle or whatever, right? Now what they do is you, you buy the ticket. It's got a QR code on it. You go up to the spindle. You have to stop right there. They take a picture of you. Then you take your QR code, you scan it, then you give them your fingerprint. You see, now whether they're doing this intentionally or not, the bottom line is they're conditioning people to give their fingerprint wherever they go, right? And so the central planners, I think, are going to take advantage of this and say, hey, listen, this point-of-sale software that you're using, in order for me to take your order at Chipotle, just go ahead and give me your Mm. fingerprint, and you can pay with Bitcoin, silver, gold, dollars, I don't care. But then once it goes through your fingerprint, it goes through the IRS. It goes on. I don't to mind that. that. I, I, I don't think you know, that. I, I, don't I mind think, that. I don't think that the world should be about tax evasion. And to be honest, like you no, should... no, no, tax evasion. No, what they're doing is they're doing that in order to get the detailed information as far as what you're buying. Because right now, if you go to Chipotle, mm. your Wells Fargo statement shows that you spent twenty bucks, but it doesn't show exactly what you bought. I don't even mind to be honest if they collect that information about me, like. The, like, like, you don't care if the central planners and the authoritarians have no, that information on each long, and every single as, American. I don't care as long as I control my spend. But if you take that and you take away my ability to control my spend, that's where, where the pit. Like for me, I don't mind record whether I eat too many nachos or tacos or who the hell cares. As long as you don't control my spend, as long as I have the, 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 the right to do whatever I want with my money. But if you take that and you combine it with with ownership of my money and telling me where I can spend. And next time I walk into Chipotle and I want to buy something, it says, sorry, we have deemed for some reason that you can't buy this. That's the part that worries me. Yeah, but that's how they get, that's how they collect the data to yeah. determine whether or not you can buy that in the first place. Rand, you, you sound like somebody they would want as a spokesperson because, you know, for us, when we're not concerned about things like that, everything starts off with, being sold as it's not a big deal. What's the big deal? You know, mm-hmm. what's the big deal? You know, it's not a big deal. We're not trying to do anything. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm already doing it anyway. So next and next and yeah. next. Some people would even say, George, just start it with your phone. You pick up your phone and seize your eyes, iPhone, oh, and boom. Absolutely. Problem. You know, and then you're you're in it. And so look, at the end of the day, C B D C is something that a lot of people are concerned with. And it, it doesn't matter whether they're crypto or not crypto, they're concerned about it. And uh, I think if there's ever been a time for us to stay more paranoid as a collective, today's the time to stay more yeah. paranoid than ever before. Enjoy your life, but stay paranoid because there are some people that have different motives than, uh, I than, don't than, think- than we do. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.